Well, hey, Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. Today seems to be, well, probably the last day before Christmas for us here at Apex Insurance Group. And I want to, again, wish each and every one of you all a Merry Christmas. Today we're going to take a satired look, I don't know if that's the correct words, but uh, insuring Santa Claus and the elves today on today's webcast. So let's kind of go ahead and kick this thing off. Um, it is a humorous look. We're not saying that Santa Claus is real uh, because we recognize that uh, he is real, right? So anyway, with that being said, we thank you for getting here early so you can look at the uh, humorous uh, things that we do in both the commercials, the updates, and uh, the previous uh, basic agents and other things that are going on here at Apex Insurance Group. So with that further ado, I want you all to know that Christmas is big business, and often the things that it's big business about is the wants of life and not necessarily the needful things of life. Now, in certain cases, uh, life insurance is being sold, annuities are being considered, retirement planning is being done, but uh, most of all, People are buying things for people they don't like to impress their neighbors with the money that they don't have so they can finance it for the upcoming year. And uh, it is commercialized, and don't you forget it. So with that, your edge towards success. Um, that's a very bad segue into this. But anyway, we need to keep things new. We need to keep things really uh Fresh. We need to do a fresh start each and every week, each and every day. So in order to be successful, somehow we have to figure out going into the new year and that season, uh, we need to keep how the new year will be brought about and be fresh for our customers, our prospects, and everything else. And when I say better this year, I'm speaking of 2023 because basically, as the movie industry says, 2022 is already in the can. And um, so we need to be looking at 2023 and how 2023 can actually be a much better year uh, than it is this year. If you've made your financial goals this year, congratulations. Uh, I really think that that is a marvelous thing, but what we need to do is continue on and maybe up and increase that with the inflation that's going on, maybe increase it by 10%. What the heck? You know, if you set your targets high and uh, you shoot high and then you kind of miss a little bit and you hit right here, it's better than aiming for here and hitting here. Did I say that right? I think I do. So anyway, we need to always look at growing. None of us can ever be content with where we are uh, financially, uh, business-wise, the number of clients. We always need to look at grow, and we need to be consistent in this. We do need to be consistent in our business practices because uh, for a couple of things. I have always told agents I would rather have an agent who consistently performs with uh, two, three, four cases a month than one agent who does a giant enrollment in the month of January and then ghosts for the remainder of the year. Consistency builds and breeds both great business practices, it keeps you at the top of your game, and it does allow you the opportunity to maintain your flexibility in the sales industry. If you're only working one day or one month out of the year, then you do get rusty. Promise you that, okay? Here we're gonna try to do a little better of a segue into this thing. This is a classified briefing. I want you all to understand that, um, that this is, uh, don't share it with anyone, okay? We're going to take a look at Santa Claus, and we're going to take a look at Santa Claus is both an inspiration for us as agents uh, in its fictional sense, but 
Santa Claus works 365, well, 24-7, 365, okay? He does take a day, and, and um, even the day after Christmas, after working all night long, uh, working with the young boys and girls across and around the world, he does review, an after-action review, of what went on. But look at all the positions that he is. He, he has to all manufacture, he has to be a plant supervisor of the elves, he has to get production planning, logistics, um, he does all of these things, all of these things. So in our perfect mind, when we say we can't get something done in 24 hours, take a look at what the man dressed in red can do. Okay, this is a whole heck of a lot, isn't it? So let's kind of keep our hand of protection over Santa Claus. And to some further degree, what we're going to do is take a look at Mrs. Claus as well. Because believe it or not, this is a team um, she is a support asset to uh, Santa Claus, um, and uh, but we're going to take a look both at the him and her aspect and also uh, all of the functionaries of the number of times and the number of hours that he works throughout the day, the days of the year, the hours per year, and then what the average wage should be. So take a look at some of these different things. Um, you know, he's an investigator. I like that. He knows who's good and who's bad. Now, I did get coal. Literally, one year, I got coal for Christmas. And uh, it did come from my sister. But nonetheless, I don't know how many of y'all can actually say that you got coal. And um, you take a look here. No wonder why he's jolly and, and rotund. He is a cookie and milk tester. And as you can imagine, I'm sure that around the world, uh, he does do a lot of tasting, uh, a lot of different milk, ranging from all different kinds. Can you imagine camel milk or goat milk or uh, whatever else is out there in the world today? Uh, even get some unpasteurized milk. What an amazing thing. Uh, all of these different things and all of these different hours a day that Santa Claus works. Now, you can see that through the magical and mystical powers of the mystique of Santa Claus, he has more than 24 hours in a day. If you just add up those number of hours, you will see that uh, it's an incredible amount of work that this uh, jolly old man has to do. And as a matter of fact, when you take a look at it, his annual income based upon the, uh, the Department of Labor assigns an hourly wage, and with those wages, he can determine that it's uh, $295,000 a year. The good news is, is because he's not based in America, and he's based in the sovereign uh, country of the North Pole, he's not subjected to uh, income tax and the overbearing of, of the uh, tax system here in America. But nonetheless, this is a tremendous amount of hours with a tremendous amount of opportunity for wages. And if we do have to consider, if you look at Tim Allen, uh, Allen in the Santa Claus movie, you'll take a look at a use case there where you take a look at the functional need of life insurance and you'll see at a ma rather modest level that Santa Claus uh, is, uh, needs a life insurance compensation package in the amount to compensate the network of uh, the North Pole of nearly $3 million. Now, I say that's rather light and it is a modest estimate, but what I do want you to understand is that without the use of this modest estimate, we really have nothing to go on. And it is important that we go with something, okay? Because when we see this life insurance, um, you know, we've got to assign somewhere. You've got to, when you're sitting as an agent, let me get com comfortable here. When you're sitting as an agent in front of the buyer, you have to start with some sort of number. And the reason that you do have to start with it is let's take a look at some of the occupational risks that Santa faces. So we all know that if we're working in some type of a life insurance realm on any type of an insurance application, there's always some questions. Are you a skydiver? Do you, are you a commercial pilot? Do you do spelunking? 
it even sounds like a vulgar term, but uh, do you go into caves? Uh, there's any, there's other things, uh, skiing I've seen. Uh, those are extremely hazardous and dangerous risks. So in Santa's world, um, he does go into every single neighborhood and uh, that neighborhood um, offers a whole lot of different security risks. And uh, those are occupational tasks. Now, he probably has elf dust or something like that. But nonetheless, there are occupational um, uh, tasks that need to be worried about, from basically working with the reindeer and their obstinate uh, capability to other things. And there is a matrix that's used to develop the occupational risks. And you can assign a occupational risk rating as well as the likelihood. So Santa has existed for hundreds of years. Uh, the the uh, possibility of Santa being shot out of the sky by anti-aircraft uh, artillery or uh, by friends or even foes of the American people or friends or foes of Santa Claus, uh, those that oppose anything good, like the Democrats. But anyway, um, that was the end of my political uh, aspirations. That just shot me down forever. But anyway, take a look at the occupational risks that uh, one would face. Even in our industry, if we go from house to house, I can't believe I still talk to insurance agents that are uh, similar to the debit business where they knock on doors as they go up and down the street. In certain parts of Tulsa, where we reside, you'd get your butt shot, okay? But nonetheless, there are significant occupational risks for Santa. Let's take a look at a number of those that are specific. First of all, dog bites. When we take a look at dog bites, we're, we're seeing a number of different breeds that are actually um, uh, that, that are higher at risk. So Santa has to be able to assess the risk of that animal before he either enters the property or goes down. Uh, the chimney and enters the house. Some animals are quite protective. Uh, even today, those people who have their therapy pets, which could be chickens, geese, alligators, snakes, uh, you know how comfortable it is sleeping with a cold, slithery snake that uh, is capable of choking you in the middle of the night. Um, but nonetheless, people do have uh, the right to have whatever therapy animals. As you detect my level of scar sarcasm here, it becomes definitely overwhelming, but there is a large number of dog bites that we need to worry about. And in as much when we do worry about those dog bites, we also need to look at roofing accidents. When we look at roof accidents, we can definitely see that there is a large number of deaths that happen each year. And as you can also imagine, that within the scope of that, I'll tell you what, there's not only the uh, accidents that happen in America, these are only the accident rates on roofs in America. It does not count for those that have thatched roofs, those that are dealing with uh, roofs over in like Ireland or Scotland that have sawed and uh, moss that grows on the top of the roof or the shale roofs and and those that have metal roofs, I can tell you that when we built the house, that metal roof was extremely slippery. And the last thing I wanted to do on a 35-foot uh, run, uh, just one side of the roof uh, from the eave all the way down was 35 feet. That would have been a long uh, time screaming as I faced uh, the fear of uncertain neck breaking. But roofing accidents happen quite a bit. And, um, and you can take a look. Total fall deaths, 37 a year in America. It's enough to make me want to take a second step and look at that occupation. The other thing that we need to look at is let's take a look at the elves, okay? Elves are the second hardest working holiday spirit in the world. You know, they, they all collectively come together. And let's take a look at what the other elves are within this. Um, you know, pardon me, the other holiday spirits. You have the Tooth Fairy. Um, you have the Easter Bunny. Uh, you have all these other things that uh, go along that are these types of spirits. Father Time. Father Time waits on nobody, okay? 
um, the Death Reaper. Now these are all holidays. Well, I don't know if death would be a holiday. For some it would, some it wouldn't. But anyway, uh, we need to take a look at them. But let's take a look at the tasks that are assigned to elves, okay? They're ter care keepers, uh, care takers of the, the gifts that are built uh, on for toys for the boys and girls. They, they manage the overall task of Christmas. Uh, they work uh, on Christmas Day. They, uh, they do all kinds of things. Imagine opening the mail. I just know that Betty, my wife, suffered two uh, paper cuts. She got a paper cut from writing Christmas letters. And uh, then the second day, she got another cut in the same spot. And then this time, it drew the wonderful color of Christmas, crimson red, as uh, blood spurted out of her finger where she had received the cut the day before. But nonetheless, um, there is a tremendous amount of paper cuts that will knock uh, people out, and we do have to understand that if we're going to ensure that risk, that uh, especially in a group policy, that we need to look at that and, and consider that. Additionally, elves make sure that Santa has the capability of reading each and every one of those letters. I don't know if he went to the Evelyn Wood speed reading course, as often uh, discussed in Cheech and Chong's uh, comedy routine, but Santa has to read a lot of elves. And I noticed that at our local post office, there, due to the volume of letters that Santa receives, he had a special post office box uh, or a drop-off box assigned at the post office for those letters. And they go straight to Santa, so he has to read all of those. They also has to, uh, uh, there are some elves that do go along with Santa and tag uh, and help him with his gift delivery. So they work all the time too. We have to take a look at the appearance of the elf because basically appearance is everything nowadays. So first off, you do have the traditional elf that has appeared uh, to many boys and girls um, across the world over the number of years. Uh, and uh, they tend to have a pixie-like appearance. Those elves, by their very manner of dress, indicate that they are happy spirits. And then now we have gone with more of a contemporary approach, uh, according to Santa, that we now have more of uh, not necessarily a holiday spirit, but uh, a gift that is designed to bring warmth to uh, the younger boys. Young boys from 20 years ago truly appreciate the new and updated look of Santa's elves today. So, um, now some uh, younger women, they do take exception to this new dress code policy for uh, the elves. But nonetheless, you have to understand that in elfism, that there are unisex, so there is no sex among the elves. Um, there are approximately 2,500 elves in the elf, um, elf army, if you will. We don't want to use necessarily the term of elf army because that would connotate a need for defense systems, but within the number of elves that are available. Additionally, the annual income of the elf is approximately 70, um, $78,000. I don't know how they negotiate uh, income increases uh, for inflationary, but everything that they do is typically paid for, all the uh, warm milk and cookies that they can consume, and they do work uh, traditionally a lot of long hours. Also, the lifespan of an elf is approximately 400 years. So in computing out the life insurance uh, premium and also any type of uh, death benefit, you have to factor that in. Another thing that we need to realize is elves are self-replenishing. Again, I don't know if they split, uh, much like amoebas where they just at a cellular level split or what happens to them. But I do recognize the fact that they are a maintaining force of, of roughly 2,500. And uh, since elves never in themselves die, I guess that would be another reason for not necessarily maintaining life insurance because what is, uh, there, since they're self-replenishing, there really would not be a need for 
uh, life insurance. So with all of this being said, why did I do this? Well, I did it as somewhat of a humorous look. I did this as something that uh, would allow us as agents to maybe take our foot off of the gas for one week out of the year. I know that for many of us, Christmas time is, uh, is a season, and there used to be a lot of joy for many Americans and many people for the Christmas season, and sometimes it just gets beat down a little bit. And that's kind of the way it is for me, but I try to maintain the joy. But one thing that is for sure, I try to wear a smile because no longer am I the one always getting the gifts that have to be opened. I'm the one providing them. So maybe that's a bit of a sorrowful thing, but I do enjoy watching my grandchildren um, and the joy on their face and running around and doing all the fun stuff and maybe living vicariously through them. And to each and every one of you agents, I do wish you, again, the merriest of Christmas. And uh, remember that Christmas in and of itself is truly big business. And um, make your insurance agency, your insurance operation in 2023, big business as well, okay? You can, uh, you can build an agency whatever size you want. So just, just basically remember that. I want to thank you very much for attending today's webinar. Um, as a matter of fact, this webcast uh, is available on a recording, so you can watch it over and over and over again. Trust me, I don't think it will go viral. But we also offer the basic, cha uh, the basic agent channel on YouTube, and that is a look at the things that most agents have done that were successful in their past, and maybe they've stepped away from those things and tried new things that may or may not have been as successful. Um, one thing I do want to point out, that the uh, Basic Agent channel, we'd like you to subscribe to it if at all uh, you feel that it's uh, uh, useful. Also, clicking the chime will notify you when we release those new videos. If you're not part of the Apex Insurance Group team, we certainly would appreciate you considering us and uh, working with us. We thank you very much for that. There's a couple of ways to reach out to us in order to uh, become part of the team or check us out further, and you can also register online. We do want to share with you that next week is our webcast, Time Management Skills, and this is a very important topic as we head into 2023. Because if we don't manage those critical tasks, we tend to waste time. We all make New Year's resolutions, and most of them are made very sincerely. But then by the 3rd or 5th or even 20th of January, most of those things are long gone in the rearview mirror. But if we can learn to manage our time with a little more uh, zeal and maintain and fence certain tasks off that we do on a regular and recurring basis and we fence that off so nothing comes in there, then uh, we'll be much more effective in the upcoming year. And again, I thank you all for attending this webcast. I thank you. And again, if I can't say it enough, Merry Christmas.